Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Fratello Talks, the short-form weekly podcast where we skip the intro and jump right into it. This week, I'm joined by my colleagues, RJ and Morgan, and uh, we're here to discuss the topic of not babying your watches. I don't. You don't? Do you yeah, baby your watches? Me neither, me neither. Well, me That's neither. It's a short podcast. But, nice. <laughs> but before we jump into it, let's do a little bit of wrist check. So what are you wearing today, RJ? I'm wearing my uh, Speedmaster Caliber 321. Uh, Ed nice. White, but uh, I'd rather call it uh, Eugene Cernan because okay. that was the guy who they scanned the, the watch off to uh, recreate this watch in 2020. Very, very cool. And you don't baby that one? I don't baby it. Not no. at all. <laughs> Perfect. And Morgan, what are you wearing? Uh, so I'm on the wrist today is the brand new, my brand new Tudor FXD. Okay. Uh, Marie National, it's the blue, the blue one that I really like on the OEM strap, Velcro strap, which is uh, nice. Yeah, very nice. And it's the the year engraved on the case back, right? Yeah, it's the 23 model. Okay. They started that one in 21, actually, and uh, end of 21. So those models are the most sought after models, but uh, I have the 23. Okay. I'm glad you said it was new, otherwise I would have maybe accused you of babying it, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's new, yeah, so it's it new, gets so pass. scratch less for now. For now, for now. For good, now. Good, good, good. Well, I'm wearing my uh, Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic, which is, uh, yeah, it has... Uh, Couple battle scars on it, but uh, yeah, not too, nothing too, uh, too bad uh, for now. But uh, yeah, it's one that'll definitely uh, see a lot more wear for sure. Nice, yeah, nice. So, what is, uh, where should we get started? You think yeah. with the topic of babying watches, what's worse, people, people who baby them, people who are worried? Or, I think or, especially people who are worried about other person's watches and their okay. condition. Okay. Because sometimes I, I go play golf and I wear my watch and sometimes I take a picture, put it on Instagram whatsoever. Right. And people, oh, don't play golf with your watch. But it's absolutely fine. Um, it's shockproof, the watches that I wear during golf. I asked several brands and they all confirmed to me that it's only a few hundred Gs uh, of impact and that yeah. should be fine uh, with, uh, with most watches. I checked Omega, I checked Rolex, checked AP. Right. Um, I think one of them responded that um, one of the reasons that professional golf players are not wearing watches, except for Phil Mickelson, I think, is that um, you can scratch or damage your watch when you take out a club out of the bag. Yeah, okay. okay. Right. And that could be indeed a, a point. I don't have a caddy yet myself. <laughs> <laughs> working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's why I can see if I get an iron or a driver from the back, yeah, you then you hit you hit a, yeah, another you golf, ride, ride, golf, right, golf okay. club with a watch. Yeah. Okay. But uh, for swimming and so on in pools, um, I don't do that very often. Only once a year if I go on a holiday, take my pro prof. And um, yeah, it got damaged by swimming in the pool, not for the water resistance. That was all fine. But, uh, you know, in, I think it was in France, Morgan. Oh, nice. That, nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, the pool, the stones in the pool, the, 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 oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. tiles, yeah. they were quite sharp and I right, scratched right, the right. clasp of my uh, pro prof. Yeah, typical when yeah, you're on the uh, edge of the pool. Yeah. Or so something. that's my real use okay. battle scar okay. on a pro prof. But that's okay. the biggest pet peeves for you is, is when it comes to babying watches is, is the sort of enforcers or the people who say, oh, you should you should take that. Yeah, exactly. Care. And it, it's okay. not, I almost wear my watches all the time, except when... Well, I don't do that, but if I work in a garden or something, right. of, even if I um, put in stuff in the dishwashing machine, yeah. I often take my watch off because you're, you're going with mm. your hand inside and right. I don't want to, right. to damage or scratch your watch. Especially right. if it's a gold watch, I will take it off. Yeah. Okay. But Makes normally sense. I just wear my watches. But, but I mean, in the same time, if you wear your watches and you're working on a desk every day, you're going to scratch the clasp the same way. That's most damage that my watches have yeah, is on the because on the you are just using yeah. it, you're scratching yeah. it over a surface like wood or whatever. So yeah, but did you wear a watch in your time as a gendarmerie? Yeah, 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 I did. Police? I did actually. Yeah, I did all the time, and people were kind of crazy about it too. Like you said, like oh, you you're crazy to wear your watch and blah blah blah. So it happens to me sometime, like a couple of time when when the situation was going to be really bad, I took the time to, to put off my, uh, right. my, my Rolex and leave it, left it in the, in the car yeah. Yeah. or whatever. But uh, other than that, yeah, I yeah. always wore a watch while I, working. I also think it's nice to just wear your watches. Yeah, exactly. Because in the end, if you just baby your watches, I'll, I'll make them safe queens, basically. Yeah. I think there's little emotional value to them in the end. Also, yeah. if you, yeah. you pass them on to the next generation, exactly. um, whether you're alive or not. Um, I think it's nice to inherit a watch that has clearly been used by someone you loved or liked or whatever. Yeah, um, and, and that's what we see also in the secondary market. The watch is completely refinished, let's yeah. say. Yeah. They, they, um, they don't have the same value. 
in yeah. the end. Yeah. And I, if you take yeah. a watch that is full of scratches because the the watch just just was just worn every day, that's the watch who cost the the most yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. So and this is also a topic that you can always have your watches polished, which is true, true to a certain extent. You yeah. could do it so many times before it loses the original the shape, shape and, yeah. and dimensions of the of the watch. I know that in the past uh, for Royal Oak, they would only do it three times in the lifetime okay. of Royal okay. Oak. Oh. Because uh, if they would do more, it would take away too much material from the from the watch. And I don't mind buying watches pre-owned that have been polished as long as it, ha it has been done well. Yeah. And yeah. not over polished. I think that's the issue. Over polished yeah. watches, yeah. for sure. Yeah, that was that so. was going to be my question. Where do you guys stand on getting watches refinished or polished? I mean, what's what's? I mean, you, you say that you would maybe do it once or twice as long as it's not too impactful. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I think as long as it keeps the the original shape of yeah. the watch, the the chamfer, the the little yeah. angles and and everything on the watch, I'm okay with it. Okay, but you you can also see watches that have been polished way too much and then it's, sure, it's becoming sure. a little mm, like yeah, it loses yeah. the chamfering yeah. on the oyster cases for example yeah exactly yeah. those chamfering is the worst for that I yeah. think yeah. also with the, the Rolex uh, day just or day dates uh, with the fluted bezel oh yeah for sure if the fluted yeah. bezel is not sharp anymore I think it's that's too much for me yeah, it needs to be sharp with you. that's a yeah. giveaway it's the same for me yeah. and what about you I think I would I would do it if it was a watch that I had bought pre-owned and I wanted to maybe remove some of those scratches from the previous owner uh, just to then be able to give it my own, but I yeah. think I think uh, if it was one of my watches, I would just let it wear its uh, dings and scratches uh, yeah. with pride. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's That'd the way be it for me. So, how about uh, examples of extreme wear? I think we discussed this a little bit when we recorded our Gata episode. Yeah, uh, but what is sort of the most extreme use that you give your your watches? Let's say both in everyday life and also maybe in uh, like if you're in in an exceptional scenario. Uh, exceptional scenario. I think I wore my Speedmaster, my Speedmaster, and I had a car crash with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's, while yeah, working in the, at the gendarmerie, actually. Uh, excuse me, gendarmerie, the the the, the French the police. Car, the <laughs> car is dead now. You yeah, can't yeah. you can't do anything with it anymore. But I remember the first the first thing I did is taking a look at my watch yeah. just to to make sure it was okay. And so it's put uh, the airbag aside. Yeah, 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 ex exactly. And it was scratch free. So yeah, Speedmaster right. is a cross test. Uh, yeah. Watch. I think so NASA nice. could have told you that, but it's good that you put it to yeah, the test. Yeah, so now you know that you can wear your Speedmaster while uh, crashing your cars. And I mean, not, not I don't recommend it. No, 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 not recommend it. So uh, yeah, that okay. was my I, worst experience, I would we, say. We have right. a colleague, uh, Gerard. Yes. <clears throat> and I don't know if he told you the story once, but he, his first Speedmaster, it was shredded to pieces because oh. he had a, a motorcycle accident with it. Oh, I haven't oh, heard yeah. it. So, so it's no completely motorcycle, shredded to, uh, to yeah. pieces. And then he brought the parts to Omega in Biel. Okay. And uh, well, he got back a, basically a new watch. They, wow. they fixed really? it, wow. refurbished it, and it was uh, good to go. Nice. Very cool. Many moons ago, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you can have a watch restored. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. is sure. it then still your watch? I think Gerard sold his watch because he didn't feel that it is, right. was his watch Right, right, right. And they have to recase it or something exactly. like that, then it yeah. feels a bit uh, yeah. okay. Okay. interesting. I know Dan also had a bike accident when he had just bought his uh, Speedmaster. And he, he had not a motorbike. The, no, 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 just no, a bicycle, bicycle yeah. Yeah, a good old uh, Dutch bike. Uh, I think that it was uh, just a few of the links were a little bit dinged up. And then he, he managed to just switch them out with some of the extra ones he had. And, and you know, it was basically good as new. But uh, yeah, I would say for me, the, the daily sort of hardware scenario is maybe even, yeah, taking my bike to work, uh, those sort of vibrations or whatever it is. But I'm not too worried about that, to be honest. No. With modern watches, it's I don't think it's uh, too much of an issue. No. Uh, and then I would say, yeah, for me, the 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 sort of exceptional usage case would be probably scuba diving. Oh yeah, yeah, which is something I hope to do a little bit more of uh, later this year. And I'll take my uh, my Seamaster with me. I think probably nice. Yeah. And did you check it for waterproofness, or is it has has it been done? It was done uh, within a few months, so it was it was serviced right before I bought it uh, at the beginning of the year. So I think it's still all good. It's survived me uh, jumping in the pool a couple times in Spain earlier this year. So I think that's yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's good enough. I'm not too worried. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. good. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just feel that some people are too worried about their watches. Um, yeah. 
even with the, speed, the Speedmasters that I'm wearing today, is that um, they feel, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, they they, they flew in rockets with this thing. Yeah. So I think it's shockproof and yeah, it probably. can handle yeah. vibrations. Do you think, do you yeah. think, where do you think the, the, the worry comes from? Do you think that it's something exclusive to watch enthusiasm where it's because no. you understand the value and the significance of it? Or do you think that it's more because, you you know, people invest such... Amounts of money. Yeah, I, I think watches. that's it. it. So it's it's the I think the financial investment that people make. Right. And um, and it's the same with Merklin trains, man. My dad collected them in the <laughs> when when I was a kid, and I couldn't touch them when I was a kid. I mean, right. it's right, just right, kind right. of a yeah, being reluctant yeah. to to uh, it's expose like collector, it to danger, <laughs> collector yeah. thing, right? Where you yeah. keep your your yeah. your things sealed and, I, and the and I think also there it's uh, in the past when these watches were really considered tool watches. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they were handed out to NASA and divers had their Rolexes, and so they were handed mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Um, so they just used them for what they were made well, as, for. As tools, that's, exactly. I think that that might be part of it because these days you wear it much more as as you know we you can use it's a luxury it as a tool, product but, and you pay yeah, so yeah, much exactly. money for yeah, the yeah, thing well, and course, it's uh, it's not a tool for us it's a, yeah it's a nice watch yeah. and uh, yeah. you can use it as a tool but yeah, in the end sure. it's a lot of money for yeah. a tool. Um, so I think there's uh, the, where, the, where the danger comes from or the, 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 the caution comes from, yeah, from for people sure. because they spend so much money yeah. and they know what the repair yeah. costs are. Yeah. Um, but I think in the end, I think it's nice to have a watch on your wrist that you wear every day or give it proper wear. Yeah. And yeah, it, it can have some battle scars. That's no... That's okay. Yeah, that's that's okay. Okay. It's going to happen sooner or later, I think. Exactly. Trying to avoid it will almost make it worse. When yeah, that's you get that what first it was. And it also exactly. makes it uh, your watch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And w when I buy a watch... I don't buy it in, in, and I don't want to sell it. You know, right? I buy yeah. a watch to keep it, not to sell it. And I think also people are uh, they have in mind that that uh, they want to buy it, and mm, if they want true. one day to sell it, they want it to be in the best condition possible. S yeah, but I think also uh, oh, yeah, watch you know, brands they they develop their watches to have it in the best condition possible because <coughs> they start to use sapphire glasses in the yeah, 70s and 80s. True, true. Uh, the, the, the aluminum bezel changed to ceramic bezels and you see uh, brands like Sin, for example, they tegument the case. Yeah, so yeah. You really try to true. scratch it with a screwdriver. Yeah. It won't uh, succeed. Yeah. And my issue with that is that a watch will look the same mm. in 30 years from now as it looks today. Yeah. And yeah. what I think is nice that you have watches that are 20, 30, 40 years old and you see that they aged. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. My too, fear yeah. is a little bit that at some point the Rolex Batmans and the Pepsis and whatsoever, they still look like the watches as they were sold now yeah. in 20, 30, 40 years true, from now. True, true. Yeah. yeah, I guess there will be uh, investors that just buy these outright, keep them in the safe. And then, yeah, I mean, that's those are valuable nowadays from the 60s and 70s, like if you get one in extremely good condition because that was a rare thing. Yeah. But if it becomes common in the future because people are really babying them and, and almost hoarding them and, and not wearing them, I think that then it'll really uh, sort of dilute that, uh, yeah. that value. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. But so. there, there's still watches that will that will age because sure. they still have yeah. a aluminum bezel. Like let's say yeah. uh, the, the, the Black Bay. Yeah, the or Black Bay line. Yeah. The, yeah. It has True. a bezel, an aluminum bezel. And yeah. I saw one uh, in Paris, actually two. Okay. That that was under the glass and uh, with the direct light uh, ah, from the okay. shop on yeah. it, and the yeah. bezel turned ghost. It was a burgundy oh, really? one, oh. and it turned like ghost, like pink ghost, and it was really great. So yeah, if from you guys UV, have yeah. a Black Bay fifty uh, four forty one with the red, uh, the burgundy, yeah. uh, I think yeah. it looks bezel. It's, nice. it's gonna be look. It's gonna yeah. look really yeah. great. I, yeah. I have to say that was for me. That was like a a plus when buying uh, my uh, Seamaster, my two two five four, that it had that aluminum bezel and that I look forward to how it will slowly age and mm. change and you know with scratches and and ghosting a little bit because yeah, it's, it almost encourages you to wear it more and more it's a bit like uh, we talk with uh, Thomas our colleague Thomas about this with the uh, uh, selvage denim where you oh, know yeah. it's about wearing it and getting uh, getting your sort of per, uh, personal touches on it and and sort of the fade and the yeah. you know where where it creases and all these things it, it it really leaves your sort of personal imprint on it and then if you're thinking of like you said before passing it down to somebody um you know eventually then it really I would say it adds value rather yeah. than taking it away. I think yeah. so too. And that's what I also like about vintage watches. And sometimes we yeah. go to these get togethers where people bring their, I don't know, vintage submariners or whatever. Yeah. And if you have 10 vintage submariners next to each other, they all look different. They yeah. all age yeah, differently, sure. not only due to the wear, but also yeah, the discoloration. Loom, the dials, so the bezels, everything. And I everything. think we will we will not see that with the current generation of yeah, no, of course. Most watches. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I think that's a little bit of a pity because yeah. uh, it's nice if it's a bit more individual. Yeah, but definitely. so the watch will still get scratched. 
Sure, so that's yeah, going to be steel, that's going to be what yeah, makes them different from if one another. If it has not been treated, another. it will yeah. still scratch. Yeah. And of course, gold watches they will scratch more easy. Yeah. 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 And sometimes creates this little bit of patina on the on yep. the case and mm -hmm. gold bracelet, yeah. which yeah, I particularly like. I think there's no uh, there's no real downside. I think people should should really just. You know, it's good to be a conscientious wearer. It's good yeah. to be aware and to not, we're not saying like damage your watches yeah. on purpose. <laughs> no, but, no. Uh, but you know, I think that it's it's good to to be able to not worry about the watch while you wear it and and do what you would do normally and you know even you know maybe not crash your car but uh, yeah, don't do that. It was not fun, but uh, <laughs> but but you know, ride your bike, go scuba diving. Don't yeah. worry about it. If if it you know if there's anything that happens to it, I'm sure it can be fixed by the by yeah. the brand or by an experienced watchmaker. Mm -hmm. But I think ultimately, don't make uh, it uh, safe queens. No, exactly. no, I don't. I don't like buying a watch and putting it on the in the safe and no. not touching it for years. And yeah, no. what is the point for me? Yeah. I, I, I'm buying a watch. To, yeah, exactly. To wear it yeah. every day, to enjoy it, to to look at it, and yeah. I don't want it to to be stuck in the safe forever. It's also of no good. I bought a new old stock Speedmaster from my year of birth, yeah. seventy seven, and uh, box papers, and it was never worn. Mm -hmm. And I never wear it as well because it it is like brand new and I feel yeah. Eh, yeah. Eh. it's yeah. Mm. so I I have other ones so I wear yeah. those but this one I don't wear not that I want don't want to but it just feels a bit awkward yeah that, for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm feel sure good to I'm be sure you would have to get it serviced anyway probably if the movement's been yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. still yeah, yeah. still uh, it still has the gluey stuff the, the red uh, ah, yeah, the marker on it the, yeah. on the back oh, nice yeah. nice 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 there is something nice about that kind of thing where it's like a bit of a time capsule. But yeah. I would say, yeah, no, just if you're buying a watch today, especially a modern watch, ah, just wear it. Just wear it because it yeah. will not age, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. I think so too, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So, yeah. Nice. No safe queens. No safe queens. Wear your watches, yeah. enjoy it, and don't think about it too much. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening and for tuning in. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and tune in next week for another episode of Fratello Talks.